Hey folks, welcome to lesson two of software design and development for higher computing science. Last time we took a quick look at subprograms and subroutines, also known as functions and procedures. Here's a program we created. We created a small function that takes in two parameters, and here we are using the function, passing in two parameters, two values. Then it asks the user for a number, validates that number, and returns the valid number. We used the function twice using different parameters, and we use the values returned from these functions to do a small calculation. Now, obviously, such a quick lesson with a minimal explanation isn't really going to give you all the information you need about functions and procedures. So I'm going to do another one. Let's do another one. Call this functions and procedures 2. Now, fully understanding functions and procedures, i.e. subprograms, it can take a lot of time. It can take a lot of practice. And there are some common misconceptions that a lot of people make. So let's go over some best practices that will help you understand what programs, modular programs should look like, and it'll help clarify how functions and procedures work. Now, one thing you should do when creating a modular program is have all your modules at the top of the program, and then all the way to the bottom, you should have a main program that uses those functions and procedures. Now, let me explain that with some examples. Let's say I have a function that gets numbers, and it's just going to be an array of numbers. So Let's just say all numbers is an array. So this function creates an array of all numbers, loops 10 times, and adds a number to the array. At the end, we'll just return that array. Let's say we have another subprogram. This one is going to calculate the average or the mean. And we're going to pass it a variable called numbers. In this function, it's called numbers. And all it's going to do, it's going to have a total that starts at zero. And then for each number in numbers, we're going to add the number to the total. This is a way of incrementing a variable by this amount. If we just look at our main program, we cannot see the functions from this uh, scroll down view. And I'm doing this purposely to show that you shouldn't really care what is inside these functions and procedures anymore. These are their own little, it's like a little black box, self-contained sub-program that you don't need to know about anymore. All you need to know is what it's called, what it takes, and what it gives you. You don't need to know the inner workings of it. You don't need to know what it does, how it does it. All you need to know is how to activate it and what you need to give it to get what you want from it. So if we scroll down, and let's say we're going to ask the user to enter their scores, right? So we could print a message, enter the 10 scores of all players. And then the scores is going to be the result of the get numbers function. Now remember, the get numbers function was called get numbers, and it doesn't have any input parameters, and it returns an array of all the numbers that the user entered, 10 numbers. Then what we can do is we can get the average score from the calc average function which takes in an array of numbers. Now, our array of numbers in the main program is called scores. So I'm passing in all the scores that we got from the get numbers function. Now, you may remember that the calc average function takes in a variable called numbers. Well, these are just temporary containers for, for values. In the main program, the scores array contains 10 numbers. When we activate the calc average function, we pass in those 10 numbers. We're not passing in necessarily the, the variable itself, the array that contains those numbers. It's just the numbers that are being passed off into this new variable called numbers, which is then used inside this function. So the variable names are unrelated. These variables, these arrays are unrelated. It's just what is contained within them that is passed from the main program to the function. So let's, at the end, print the average score and see if this works. So this is the entirety of the program, really. It's just that we created functions previously that we can use in our main program to make our code neater, and it just makes it a bit easier to read. So I know that scores is going to contain whatever get numbers gives me. I'm calculating the average score by using this function. And these can be reused over and over again as well. And if an error appears on this line, we know that it was within this block of code. If an error appears on this line, we know it was within this block of code. All right, let's run the program, see what happens. So enter the 10 scores of all players. Enter a number. So we're just going to enter a bunch of numbers. 
and it calculates the average 5.5 and it displays it just like you would imagine by looking at this main program. So this is what I recommend when creating modular programs. Create your functions and procedures at the start and then create a main program that is going to be independent of these functions even though it's going to use them. So that was lesson two on functions and procedures. We're going to do more on this. I hope you're following. I hope you're understanding it and give it a practice. Mess about with it. Do what you can. Hope you've enjoyed this one. I'll catch you in the next one.